Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'll be presenting a paper that was recently published in AAAI. And the title of the meeting is, uh, the paper is Compressing Deep Neural Networks with One-Shot Droning and Quantization. Here's a brief agenda of today's talk. First, I'll speak about the motivation behind this work. Then I'll give some preliminary about model compression in general. Then I'll introduce two main methods brought by this paper, which is the unified layer-wise weight pruning and the unified channel-wise weight quantization. And then I'll talk about some experiments and finally I will conclude the paper. We know that the deep neural networks have been a tremendous success because uh, they're mainly dependent on the vast availability of the advanced computing power on devices and also the large availability of data. So we see them being widely used in several areas like facial recognition, smart healthcare, et cetera. However, the disadvantage of using such big deep neural networks is the large model size that it has and also the high computational operations that it involves in computing things. So these have embedded the popularity of the deep neural networks, especially on smaller devices like mobile devices. If we look at uh, how the size of the deep neural networks have grown through the years, I can just briefly introduce you to this uh, figure from this uh, recent paper where we see that uh, the circle, the diameters indicate approximately the size of the models. And we see that uh, bigger networks like uh, Inception Network or ResNet or the VGG, they have already higher accuracy compared to the smaller networks. But uh, unfortunately, the disadvantage of this is the number of operations are increased and also the model size. So for VGG19, we see that it has about 155 uh, million parameters. So while scaling up the DNN size improves the model accuracy like we need, uh, it also impedes the training on resource constrained devices. Also, we can see problems like low memory resources and expensive computation, limited storage space and increased latency at inference, all these, especially when it comes to mobile devices. So one method to overcome this problem is to use model compression. Model compression methods usually reduce the model size significantly. There are several model compression methods. The main commonly used methods that I've been introducing today are pruning and quantization. The pruning removes unimportant connections and uh, it sets the weight which is less than a salient or an importance threshold below that are all set to zero. So before the pruning, if we had a network like this, then after pruning, all the unimportant connections are removed and you get a smaller version of the original model. And quantization is another such model compression method, which typically reduces the precision of the uh, variable. For example, the weights are usually represented in 32-bit floating point, but such a high precision is not necessary. So we can use quantization to reduce the number of bits which are required to represent a number. The advantage of doing this is that, that it reduces the memory storage and the computation costs. While model compression helps us in several ways, there are a few challenges which are brought about by using them. First of all, the existing solutions we have are a little inefficient because most of the compression allocation that happens is usually in a manual way or an iterator way. And also it brings about another disadvantage that the more com uh, compression is achieved, the lesser will be the accuracy or the performance of the model. So there'll be higher accuracy loss. And uh, when it comes to the quantization, we have uh, the previous works have shown that fine-grained channel-wise quantization usually achieves a higher compression rate than compared with the uh, coarse-grained layer-wise quantization. But to implement the channel-wise quantization, the problem would be that every channel of a layer has its own channel-specific quantizer. So for this block of the network, we see that every channel here has uh, its own kind of specific quantizer. So the problem of having this is that there's an expense of extra overhead that is introduced by these channel-wise code books. So storing them and using them is a computational burden. And the other challenge that is seen is combining two methods like pruning and quantization. Though they allow us to compress the model a lot, it is almost impossible to find the exact precision of quantization and a good pruning ratio together and tune manually tune these values to achieve the compression that we need. So to overcome this problem, the strategy that is introduced by this paper is, first of all, they introduce a novel method called the OPQ, 
which is one shot pruning quantization. And as part of the OPQ, they introduce a smaller method called the unified channel quantization. As a whole, what unified channel quantization does is it makes sure that uh, it gives a common or a unified uh, quantization value to the entire channel. So by this doing this, the computational burden is reduced and but we can still achieve the performance that is a, that would be obtained by using channel-wise quantization. And the claim of this paper mainly is that they can use just the pre-trained model, which will be sufficient for solving both the pruning and quantization compression simultaneously. And they say that they can do the compression at the fine tuning stage, where they can keep all the compression models fixed and only the weight parameters can be updated based on whatever compression values were learned from the pre-trained models. So going a bit into the details of the pipeline of the method, let's say that we have a pre-trained model, which is completely trained, but not compressed. In one shot, the, this method computes the quantization steps and the pruning masks required. And uh, it does a parallel one-shot quantization and pruning over the pre-trained model. So your full precision model comes down to a quantized model and the quantized weights become pruned weights. So quantization and pruning kind of go in parallel. And uh, the end result is you have a completely compressed model during the fine tuning stage. So here we see that the channels of each layer share the same quantizer, so they have the same code book. So it does not add any computational, additional computational burdens. And given any pre-trained model, the pruning mass and quantization steps can be analytically derived in just one shot. And these things can be fixed while fine tuning the compressed models. So this eliminates uh, iterative pruning or manually finding the compression values required, et cetera. Uh, going into more details about how this proposed method works is, so on a pre-trained model, the basic goal is to get W hat. So W hat is nothing but the mixture of pruned and quantized weights. M is the mask that we have, that we will calculate per layer. And uh, the delta is nothing but the quantization step we need. W is the weight per layer and uh, we compute these compression values and in one shot we'll calculate the W hat, which is the compressed version of the model. So in more details, uh, from the pre-trained model, we compute the mask and the quantization steps. I'll explain about these uh, details in the following slides. So once we get the quantization and the pruning mask, uh, we perform local iterations, like n number of iterations. Firstly, we randomly sample a mini batch the training set and we compress the weights using the quantization steps and the pruning mass that we calculated for the model. So after we finish the compression, we do the forward propagation with the pruned and the quantized weights and then we compute the cross entropy loss and we update the model weights uh, according to the stochastic gradient. And this uh, is repeated until all the samples are selected so that in one shot, all the compression happens. Uh, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, if not, uh, I'll just proceed. Sure. Uh, so for the pruning strategy. I'm yeah. sorry. So the compressed model will be used for the inference, right? Because all, everything is pre-trained. Yes, it'll only be for the inference, but this uh, step will happen during fine tuning stage. Okay, okay. Okay, so the pruning strategy that this uh, paper proposes is called unified layer-wise weight pruning. In this, the goal is to find a general unified formulation to prune the weights uh, of all the layers. So first of all, to find the pruning ratios of all layers, we use uh, something called as PI. PI is nothing but the percentage of weights with small magnitude, the ones that we feel are not important and they probably do not contribute much to the performance of the system. So we, we want to remove them away. So we first, the goal is to first find such small magnitude weights. So for that, this is the kind of uh, formulation that we have. Ni is nothing but the number of weights you have per layer, at least your number of layers. And uh, your beta, beta is nothing but a positive scalar value. You use a symmetric range between uh, minus beta and plus beta, just to see that where you get, uh, obtain this. And uh, N will be your total number of weights across all layers. 
and this is simplified further. And uh, next, we'll compute the pruning error, the error which is introduced by such a compression that is again computed using uh, the weight of that layer uh, per channel. And this can also be simplified uh, in this way. So these things are next used to use in our pruning objective function. So in the pruning objective, we would want to minimize the pruning errors that we have or the pruning loss. So because this is a little hard to solve, uh, they use the Lagrangian multiplier to kind of simplify this problem and uh, come up with uh, an objective uh, like this, where P star is nothing but your objective pruning rate that you want to have. So finally, this kind of uh, equation now will be a composition of your per layer weights and your uh, objective function. And to solve this problem, uh, this is one kind of assumption that uh, this paper makes, where they say that this fi of x could probably be like a Laplace probability density function. So assuming that they, they simplify it using uh, the kind of distribution it would follow and substitute that value into this and uh, uh, and then uh, uh, partially did a partial differentiation of this and setting it to zero, et cetera, and solving in that way. And also using the newton raphson methods and the Levenberg Markwood algorithms, they can finally solve this and we can be able to obtain the lambda value, which will nothing but be equal to the beta value. So using these beta values, you get the range. So from this, uh, by using the beta values back into this equation, so we can get the P value, which is nothing but what are the percentage of weights with a smaller magnitude. After we obtain this kind of um, percentage, we can use that to finally derive the binary mask we need, the M that we saw in the algorithm. We can apply that to perform the pruning. And uh, in terms of quantization, it follows some, uh, it, the goal is the same. It's just that we are doing it on channel wise here instead of layer wise that we did for pruning because the channel-wise quantization obtains better results as seen in the past. So here they do channel-wise weight quantization. And uh, because they wanna have a unified, a general one, so per channel, you wanna use the same quantization step to do the compression. There are certain steps that it follows. First of all, they give this formula to compute the number of quantization bins that would be required to store all the unpruned weights of the channel. So because the Weights which are already pruned, which were set to zero, uh, discarding them, whatever was remaining, the unpruned weights. So those are taken into consideration. And again, we use a similar uh, parameter like alpha. We use a range of minus alpha to plus alpha. This is just a positive real value to be able to get to the number of quantization bins we want. And delta i here is nothing but the quantization step that we'll take. So extending this to per layer, I mean, per channel, uh, we'll have it uh, this way where NIJ again is the unpruned weights which are remaining in the network. KIJ is our number of quantization bins which were per channel. So this way we get the KI, we use this and we project this to the model wise. So this is uh, in the layer, this is inside the channel and this is on the entire model. So we see that it's a summation of per layers and per channels and then we substitute the same values where fi x is our objective and uh, they approximate this to be as a two power b. b here is nothing but the number of bits, the bit size that we'll need. And uh, they can use a common quantization function to achieve this, uh, like the sine of x, delta of x by delta i. I think this we've seen in other papers, it's just a widely used quantization function that this paper is also adopting. Using this, uh, we compute the mean square errors caused by quantization specifically. Let's indicate it by LQ. So substituting the values from the previous slide back in here and also doing some simplification. Uh, this is the objective we can come up with. And this they solve through other methods and they approximately give this value, but they justify this value in their experiments and they try to compare and see whether this was correct or not. And again, uh, this can be solved by introducing Lagrangian and taking the partial derivative and setting the terms to zero, et cetera. And after solving it, we will be able to obtain the delta i value, which is our 
quantization step value per channel. This, as we see, is dependent on the number of unpruned weights that are remaining in your network, and also the alpha value that we set, and the number of bits that you want to set the precision with. And the lambda value is uh, after you try to solve the Lagrangian, you'll get the lambda value. And this is how they're able to solve these things. And after combining these above equations, they can get the quantization quota for all the layers it is per layer. So this way they can extend it to all the layers and using that they can quantize the given DNN model. Uh, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, so by doing this in parallel pruning and quantization, they were able to prove uh, to find values theoretically. And uh, I think that is the novel contribution of this work. They use these uh, thing, these methods into the experiment. And uh, I think they've done a wide range of experiments. Uh, they've used four different models, AlexNet, VDG, ResNet, and MobileNet. And the data set they use commonly for all of these models is the ImageNet. And uh, for baselines, they divide it into three kinds of uh, methods. One is the pruning, just the pruning. For just the pruning, they compared with six other papers. One is the data-free pruning, where uh, without our data, you will be able to prune the network, which shows very good values. And the adaptive fast food, less is more, dynamic network surgery, circulant CNN, and the constraint-aware networks. All these are very recent pruning papers. And for quantization, they compare it with three other uh, very popularly used quantization works, which is the QCNN, the, and then the binary weight networks, uh, which was one of the first papers which had, uh, started the weight quantization using the binary values, and the renom, which is also a recent work. And for the pruning quantization combined, they compare it with three other works, which is the deep compression, which is a very popular paper by Dr. Sung Han's group, where they combine the pruning quantization and uh, uh, so other compression methods to achieve this, and then ClipQ and ANNC. So, so on performing the experiments on these uh, simulations, these are the kind of results we get. The first table here is uh, running ImageNet on the AlexNet network. Compared with all the other methods, the last one is the one that indicates this particular works. So as we can see that the top one accuracy is high, but we see that one of the other methods is a little bit higher than this, but uh, this method does not have a lot of compromise. It's just about uh, the same as that. And uh, it's in fact better by 0.46% compared to the original unpruned, uncompressed network. And even the top five accuracy, there is a boost in that. We see this shows the pruning rate that was employed and uh, the bit quantization bits that was used. And uh, this is the overall compression rate. We see that this is the highest amount of compression that uh, any other methods here comparatively provides. So I think this paper outperforms several other methods. And um, performing the experiments on VGG, here they restrict, uh, while the previously they were using the more of the pruning works, here they compared the performance more with the quantization and pruning quantization compare, uh, combined works. So even here they see that the top and accuracy is a lot higher though it's a little just about 0.24% smaller than the uncompressed original uh, version, it's still a lot high, same with the top five accuracy. And uh, even though the overall compression rate is probably the highest here, it, it has a drastic difference between probably the thin net or the QNN. The QCNN, which is very popular, only shows about 23 times compression, but this is like uh, way, way higher, hundreds of times more. It's about 195 times more. And uh, they show kind of similar uh, accuracy compression rate experiments on the other two models using the same image net. On the mobile net V1 as well, they can see that uh, the performance is uh, much higher compared to the other works. And uh, here there are two columns, two rows of theirs. Uh, one is uh, to have a different uh, the pruning rate and the other is to have the different quantization uh, uh, bit rate. And even here we see that the 
accuracy is also much higher and so is the compression rate provided. And uh, on the more popularly used ResNet, also we see that uh, the performance of this paper is much, much higher in terms of the accuracy, compression, and also the compression rates that is provided. Other than these uh, performance related experiments, they do a little bit of error analysis for two of the things. One was the pruning error where the paper kind of approximates, uh, assumes that the FI of X follows a Laplacian distribution, one for that. So here they try to verify that by checking the pruning rate and over how much error it produces. And uh, the blue line indicates the actual error obtained and red is the analysis of using the, their theoretical formulation, what was the value obtained? We see that uh, the real as well as the analyzed uh, values are very similar, uh, showing that their claim is very close to the reality. And then it comes to quantization again, they were approximating their values to the delta i square over 12. So this also is in agreement with the actual real experiments. So that way we can say that their approximation error is in good agreement with both the real quantization errors. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, I have the conclusion of today of today's talk. So we saw that the paper produced this proposed a novel one-shot pruning quantization method, which is used to compress the DNN models. The method mainly addressed two of the challenging problems, which are mainly seen in network compression. The first is that they do not have to manually tune or perform iterative optimization of any compression strategy. They can just use a one-shot compression and also on the pre-trained model. And the second is that uh, the unified channel-wise pruning, which is their main other main contribution, it enforces that all channels of each layer share a common code book. So this will avoid any overhead that can be brought about by other traditional channel-wise quantizations. And through several experiments, they showed that their method achieves superior results comparing to state-of-the-art, both in terms of the accuracy, test accuracy, as well as the compression ratios and the compression rate that they were able to provide. And they provide the small further discussion regarding their work. So they claim that uh, this kind of method, uh, especially the quantization, because it is done channel-wise and it might have less computational burdens and uh, even the pruning, they follow a certain strategy. They want to implement this on the real hardware to see how the inference efficiency of such a compressed model might work. And uh, there's one disadvantage of this method that can be brought is because they're using two different kinds of compression operations, there might be some compression bias that can be caused because of the unusual weight distribution and also because of the compression rate, higher compression rate, and which might trade off the utility of the system. So this is one of the negative aspects of this paper. Um, so that's all I have today. Do you have any more questions? <laughs>